Okay, continuing on, acute spasmodic laryngitis. This is also known as spasmodic croup, or croup that comes at night. And that's very common. The child is okay during the day, and then during the night, they wake up with that barky cough. So it comes and goes, meaning it's, uh, they have, it's paroxysmal, paroxysmal attacks of laryngeal obstruction. So it, at night, they get some mucus there, they get some swelling and some obstruction and have that croupy cough. Occurs at night, inflammation can be mild or absent. Um, this is usually kids between ages one and three. And in the morning, they, they can be up all night. The parents <laughs> exhausted, they look horrible by the time morning comes and the child wakes up just fine. Uh, that's typical of this uh, spasmodic group. The best treatment is that cool mist humidifier. And this is the other one where you might suggest parents try to really get a lot of humidity. They can go in the bathroom with the shower making a lot of steam or they can open the freezer door and get cool air, especially if there's some swelling. However, for some kids, the warmth and for some the cool is going to make it worse as opposed to better. Bacterial tracheitis, uh, usually under three years, and this is an infection of the mucosa of the upper trachea. Um, this has features of both croup and epiglottitis, uh, if you really look at the pathophysiology, but the clinical manifestations you're going to see look like the laryngeotracheal bronchi bronchitis. Um, and it may come with the laryngeotracheal bronchitis that started there and kind of moves up into the trach. They have thick purulent secretions and that's what causes respiratory distress in these kids. Where you most often will see this is kids who have um, a tracheostomy. So they have a trach tube in and they get trach tracheitis. Now we're moving down to the lower respiratory uh, airways. This is the reactive portion of the lower respiratory tract. So this is the bronchi out into the bronchioles. Um, this is where you, they should have some car cartilage, cartilaginous support, but it's not fully developed until about adolescence. And there's a table in the book that I suggest you look at for um, what this looks like, signs and symptoms and treatments of that. Bronchitis. So we're talking about inflammation of the, the bronchi, also known as tracheal bronchitis. So inflammation of the trachea and the bronchi. This is usually going to be viral and it can be associated with an upper respiratory infection. They'll have a dry hacking cough and it gets worse at night. Again, you lay down, you get some, the secretions pool, um, you're not moving around and bringing stuff up and you know just positional. You, get it setting in there. Uh, the cough is usually non-productive in the beginning, but then after two to three days, it'll start being productive. They'll start finally getting that stuff up. We said it's usually viral, so we're going to treat symptoms, and usually five to ten days it will run its course and they'll improve. Now, moving out just slightly farther into the bronchioles, um, we get bronchioles uh, bron bronchiolitis, this is most often in little ones caused by RSV, respiratory syncytial virus, and this is the most frequent cause of hospitalization for children under three years of age. In the winter, Children's Hospital, which right now has one of the four acute care units closed, all four will be open and the single bedrooms will be two beds. They'll have two patients packed in a lot of them. So the census goes up like crazy during the winter, pretty much exclusively RSV. Uh, so it's a viral infection during the winter and the spring around here. Just think of it as going with the fog. When it's foggy weather, that's RSV season. And what happens is the bronchial mucosa swells, the lumen fills up with mucus and exudate, and so air is trapped. Air can't move through that swollen, mucus-filled bronchial. 
the treatment, humidity, fluids, rest, clearing out the airways, tends to have very thick secretions, um, so on those babies, clearing the nose, uh, anything we can get in the throat. Usually we give these kids a little bit of oxygen, they usually need that. Bronchodilators to try and open it up. Antibiotics, well, they often will put the children on an antibiotic because you leave that mucus in the lungs for long enough and you have a perfect medium to grow bacteria, but it's viral, at least initially, so you may not treat it with antibiotics until it's gone on long enough that you're thinking there's a secondary infection. Might need Lasix for moving some of that fluid out. Um, we said earlier kids are prone to fluid shifting. Uh, CPT, this is your uh, chest percussion therapy or physiotherapy. This is where you cup your hand and bang on the chest to try and loosen up those secretions and then vibrate to shake them out. Um, it sounds bad, but it actually feels pretty good. It's kind of a uh, like the uh, choppy part of a massage. Ribavirin is an antiviral agent that we tried using for a while um, with mixed results and found it had some side effects and anyway, still sometimes used but not necessarily. So that's kind of controversial. Biggest thing is prevention. There um, is RSV immunoglobulin and uh, I, I think they have an actual immunization that's finally been developed, but maybe it's just giving them immunoglobulins. Anyway, it's only done on high-risk infants, so it's not yet available to everyone, but and I'm not sure if the immunization is available, but they're very close to having one because they're saying it should be available in the next few years, and that will just really decrease hospital admits for for children because this is what brings them in. Okay, pneumonia. Um, pneumonia, they get congestion, um, organisms get out into the alveoli and that results in fluid filling up the alveoli. The organisms multiply in the fluid and spread the infection. The way I like to think of the lungs is think of your Disneyland balloon. You've got the two balloons, Mickey's head's on the inside and then there's a balloon on the outside. If you have a pneumothorax or a pleural effusion, that's between the two. So it's inside the pleural sac but outside the lungs. Pneumonia is inside the lungs. So if the pneumonia happens at the base of one of Mickey's ears, it gets all plugged up there, that ear is going to collapse because you can't get air out into the ear. So you can end up with atelectasis from pneumonia uh, because the air can't get past wherever that um, fluid buildup is. So it has a couple of stages to it. The red hepatization where there's a massive dilation of capillaries. The alveoli fill up with organisms. Uh, we bring neutrophils and RBCs and fibrin trying to kill some of those but we also fill up the alveoli and then we get gray hepatization and during this time the blood flow decreases and now the leukocytes and the fibrin consolidate and this is when the, they'll talk about consolidation on a chest x-ray you're seeing um, seeing this. Uh, resolution, our goal is to get complete resolution to, and healing to not leave any um, scarring or problems uh, inside the lung. And pneumonia can be bacterial, it can be viral, it can be fungal. Uh, most pneumonias are viral. Often it's RSV. It can also be parainfluenza, influenza, adenoviruses in our older kids. It, they're very susceptible to getting a secondary bacterial invasion though. Just think you've got this mucus sitting in there perfect medium for something to grow. So uh, treat symptoms and if we think it's developed a secondary bacterial infection then antibiotics. 
bacterial pneumonia is often from strep. That streptococ streptococcus pneumoniae is the most common uh, variety of strep that causes it. And these kids, they look sick. They appear ill, they have a fever, they've got malaise, they just lay there and don't want to play. Rapid, shallow respirations, they'll have a cough that sounds like they're coughing from their toes. It's not just the <coughs> in their throat. They're coughing and you think, man, that's coming from way down, and it is. And they'll have chest pain. It hurts when they cough, when they deep breathe. This, we do want to treat with antibiotics. We're going to give them O2 because we've got part of that lung that's full of exudate, so it's not, not working or it's got plugs blocking off the uh, movement of air. Keep them hydrated with IV fluids. Nursing care uh, is primarily supportive and symptomatic. We are giving the uh, antibiotics, but the rest of what we're doing is just symptomatic care. Pertussis. Hopefully you guys have gotten a pertussis booster. This is caused by a bacteria, Bordetella pertussis. Um, in the United States, it occurs most often in children who have not been immunized. However, that immunity wears off, and by junior high age, kids don't have immunity anymore. They don't get all that sick. Their airways, they've grown, so their airways big. It's not a horrible illness for them. The problem is then they go and give it to an infant. Uh, this has the highest incidence in the spring and summer. It is highly contagious. In young infants, it has a high mortality. The younger the infant, the higher their likelihood that they will die from it. Children under two months have not had any immunization for it yet. The first one is at two months. So if those children get it, they can die. Uh, there is a vaccine and because we've had an outbreak of this in Fresno County, we're now doing boosters on everyone. If you've taken care of a kid at the hospital with pertussis, they're scary to watch. They start coughing, cough, 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 and you feel like, okay, stop and take a breath. They don't. They keep coughing, 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 coughing. Pretty soon they're turning red, maybe purple, maybe a little blue around the, the mouth, um, and then they go, Ugh! and start right back into coughing. Oh, I thought I had a treatment. Usually what we do is blow by some oxygen so that when they do take a breath, they get a little extra oxygen with it, and we sit them up just so when they take a breath, they do get, you know, at that larger breath, but it's just plain scary to watch. Um, form body aspiration. Uh, highest risk is children one to three. This is the age where they put stuff in their mouth, and then they jump up and uh, breathe it down. Um, depending on what it is, it may or may not show up on an x-ray. Some things are not radiopaque, they don't show up on an x-ray. Most things are pretty easy to get out. We put down an uh, endoscope and suction it out. But you can see a first degree obstruction air can go in and can get out around it. A second degree obstruction air can go in because the airway opens a little bit as you breathe in and it collapses a little bit on exhalation and so you get this air trapping. The air doesn't go out well and complete obstruction we're not moving air in or out and that of course is a medical emergency. Um, the things kids choke on are hot dogs. Cut them the long way, end to end, not in round slices. The round is just the right shape to go down uh, their airway. The other one is latex balloons. 